Hello YouTube, it is Lucy here from the Square Enix Life is Strange channel and today I'm joined by two very, very special guests. The lead writer on Life is Strange 2, Jean-Luc Cano, and the co-creative director, Raul Barbet. So we're currently at San Diego Comic-Con, which is huge, such a big deal. Uh, you guys have been around the show floor today, how have you found it? Crowdy. <laughs> and uh, busy. yeah, yeah, busy, but you know, it was really, really cool to see uh, a lot of new anons also, and uh, of course a lot of cosplayers, mm. crazy ones, so, <laughs> so cool. It's a great atmosphere, just yeah. everyone coming together to enjoy. I really, really like this kind of this kind of atmosphere, this kind of mood. All the people are really nice uh, to each other. It's wonderful. We are doing a panel uh, called Building a Believable World for Life is Strange 2. So for anyone watching who hasn't been able to attend, um, can you tell us a little bit more about your creative processes? I think yeah, the process begins with Jean-Luc and Michel, who is not here today, the other creative director with me. Mm -hmm. uh, we work all three together on the main story of the game. And um, after it's a lot of work with all the team. It's like 60 people, I would say, in total for the team. So with a concept artist for uh, environment artist, um, character, light, etc. We work with them on each sequence, uh, but I would say um, the main work with Jean-Luc is really about the, all the storyline and after on each second the motion capture session when we of course have all the animation with the actors, um, the work on the dialogue also mm -hmm. a bit after, but the main story and after some steps for each sequence to really have the final game. Obviously you guys have um, inspired a load and load of people through the Life is Strange games. What would you say to anybody who's really trying to get into the games industry? Do you have any advice? Advice for them who'd really love to do what you guys do. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Inspirational, thanks, Jean Luc. To be honest, uh, if you want to work in video game industry, it's um, yeah, it's like every job. You have to be passionate and uh, sure of your choices and what you want to do. And uh, it's not like uh, working in a, in a dream or stuff like this. It's it needs work. Mm -hmm. It needs uh, a lot of work and a lot of patience and commitments. So be prepared to, uh, to work hard. But the, the, the result when you, when you are releasing a game, it's one of the biggest achievements um, you, you can have. It's wonderful. We are quite old now in the industry <laughs> with Jean-Luc. So no, you're not. At, at this time, there wasn't so many schools. Uh, there is a lot now in yes, France, yeah. for example, and in all other countries. But for um, uh, I'm an engineer, and uh, Jean-Luc comes more from the cinema and mm -hmm. cinematographic. Uh, uh, world, uh, but I think if you're curious and if you try to do some stuff at home a lot uh, and uh, read a lot, see also uh, play games, see movies, and you can find a lot of inspiration by doing that. This is how we learn. In fact, it's by seeing, reading, etc. Be curious yeah. about other arts. Also, it's not just video games, but. Definitely. Uh, a lot of inspiration uh, from different places. Exactly, yeah. and I think the most important is really to to do, to make, so to try to create, even if it's small stuff. For example, for Jean-Luc, is really to write. He's writing every day, every day. Uh, so it's a lot of work. And even if you uh, want to be a designer, for example, you can have an engine for free now. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to find some things on the internet. So it's really to go into the, uh, really the, the real stuff and the real work. It's how you learn and it's how you can show some stuff because if you just think about it or not really, if you want to design, for example, not really to go into the game and the, the making, uh, I think it's really the best way to, to go really into the making and to work every day to try to do your own stuff, etc. Classic advice, but uh, I think... <laughs> But a good solid, one. yeah, solid good advice. Jean-Luc, so you're the lead writer on the game, and we just mentioned you take a lot of inspiration from different things. What would you say one of your biggest inspirations in terms of writing is? I'm a huge, huge fan of Stephen King. I've read all these books, and it's definitely his work that gave me the the, the envy, the will when I was a kid to 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 write my own stories. I really, I'm really a huge fan of Stephen King, and also Steven Spielberg is a is massive inspiration for me. So when, uh, when you combine these two biggest artists for me, really my, um, my roots are here. And Raoul, you are obviously a massive influence in terms of the musical selection and music is such a massive part of the Life is Strange games. Personally, what kind of things do you like to listen to and what inspires you to bring that over into Life is Strange? I think it really depends on the moment and uh, uh, even on a moment of your life or your, your, or, or your mood, I would say. Uh, the music that is in Life is Strange is more 
some music I was e listening to uh, like some years ago. Uh, no, I changed a bit, but um, some folk like you have heard, of course, in Life is Strange, uh, neo folk song. Uh, I'm more from the rock uh, scene and uh, also a lot of electronic uh, music like. Mm -hmm. uh, Uh, art, uh, techno, uh, uh, art techno is kind of uh, silly stuff. Uh, and I'm quite generally, so I listen to a lot of different things. But uh, yeah, I would say if I have to pick, it would be rock and uh, uh, folk like you here yeah, in Life is Strange. Characters are obviously a huge part of the Life is Strange games. What is your process for developing and creating all these different personalities and characters? On, on the beginning, we have the idea of the story with Michel and Raoul. Once we have the main plot of the game, we are going deeper and deeper into the characters. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think the, the most important thing when you create a character is to give him some uh, flaws, you know, some weakness. Yeah. Because when a character has a weakness, in, that's our weakness that makes you, make him human, you mm -hmm. know, and you believe. connect with them more yeah. because we're not perfect, so. Exactly. When you are in college or high school, you always have the most popular kid mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the high school, but, There is one popular kid that was a massive... All of them, all, uh, all of the other kids aren't this cute guy. So I prefer writing about all the weakness of everyone than of the perfect kid, you know. So, um, yeah, I think the weakness make the, the best characters. And speaking of characters, there's been, um, from the community, quite a lot of love for, say, Lila and, um, of course, Mushroom. Uh, were you expecting that? And um, how are you reacting to that reaction? I think you never know when you create a story or characters, how public will respond to that. What is great about Layla is that it's a very short moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you spent very short moments with her. And I think For us, it was a challenge uh, because of the story that we have to, to create to make the player feel uh, understand very quickly the world around Shen and who is he, uh, who is the, the avatar you're going to play with this guy. Uh, and Layla helps a lot uh, on that. And uh, I think this connection between Shen and Layla at the beginning of the game works very well. And uh, the response from the player was incredible, I think, because of that also, because it's what you are going to lose after in the story. Uh, this is like the perfect world of Shun at the beginning. Uh, and you, uh, all this world is going to be destroyed and Leila is part of this world. But yeah, we, we are really happy to see that all the players love this character, even if it's very short. Like uh, Jean-Luc uh, was explaining, I think when you create a character, you try to write about his backstory, all yeah. this stuff. And when you see that the players are very curious to know more, it's always uh, something yeah, unique. When you are giving some rules to someone, mm -hmm. as Sean, you have to break sometimes your own rules to put the player in front of this very difficult choice with Daniel in front of the mountain lion. It's awful. So mean. Uh, I don't know if you have a dog, but uh, we really, I think to have this uh, moment between the two brothers and the dog was also creating a new um, family cocoon a bit, even if yeah. it will never replace uh, mm -hmm. what they have uh, lost. But it was also this, uh, this feeling of family when you are alone in this house uh, in the snow. And I think uh, Mushroom helps a lot in those moments. Uh, and yeah, I think he's very cute. And it was uh, really great to, to create. <laughs> <laughs> create it. Okay, thank you, Jean-Luc. So you see that Jean-Luc is a cruel one. Going back to Lila just for a brief second, yeah. can we confirm if we might be seeing her again in the future? I know we can't talk about that. Sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I tried. I tried. Sorry. What has been each of your personal favorite moments from working on Life is Strange 2? I really enjoying the development of the game. You know, mm -hmm. the, what we are going to do now, it's every day. It's a really nice time to, 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 to work with the team. We have an amazing team in Dortmund and every day is really, really cool to work with them. But for me, I think what the best moment was really the beginning when we only have the, the first idea of, okay, we are going to tell a story about two brothers and the, all the meeting we had with Michel and Raoul, but give, writing some stuff into on the post-it, put it on the wall and watch all the story going, moving up. Okay, let's create a new character. And all these phases of pure creation, you know, I, I really enjoyed this moment. It's because it's before all the problems you have <laughs> when you're creating the game. Yeah, of course, those moments are, are really, really cool to, to work on. So the, um, 
moment when you see that Daniel uh, works as a character and uh, you see that after players care for him and want to protect him as it's, it's only uh, 3D characters uh, yeah. created for nothing from nothing so it's always great to see people caring for a character like this and wanted to protect him because it's, it's what, it was also the goal of, of the game. Really enjoy episode 3 for all the sequence with the music. Uh, I'm really happy with the music we've been able to have uh, on in episode 3 and uh, the uh, cinematographic artist uh, Mathieu Baudelin and the team has made uh, incredible work with the camera on episode 3 and it was really really great to see all those things working together and I think the, the feeling of the, the drifters uh, camp yeah, we, I think we, we create something cool with that. So that was basically just a short snippet of what we're going to be talking about on our panel on Saturday. Thank you very much for joining me and Thank chatting you. with Thank me today. You. Thank you. And um, guys, episode four is coming on August the 22nd. It's right around the corner, so keep your eyes peeled for that. It will be good. <laughs> it will be good. Catch you guys in the next video.